28 to nothing. The Longhorns on top of this one threatening to make it a route. And Mike, to me, the big difference in the first half has been that the quarterback who has a famous name in James Brown. James Brown has had a great first half run. Not only throwing the football, but running the football. He's been able to escape the pressure of Texas Tech. Just take a look at James Brown's first half. Back to pass. Nothing open. His biggest plays have been scrambling against the Texas Tech defense. Here he's running outside. Next back to pass again. Now he works down to pick up the first down and slides in safely. And here's the long pass to Michael Adams for the big gainer and set up another score. Very good first half, 150 passing yards. James Brown has done it in the first half. Dane Johnson waiting to receive the kickoff from Dawson. We had a game last Saturday just like this. Arkansas and Auburn. Auburn got back in the game. Down just across the 20. And here's an interview that Mike Adamley had just a couple of moments ago with Spike Dykes, the head coach of the Red Raiders. Coach, last week we had an Arkansas team that led Auburn 27 to nothing, and Auburn came back. How do you guys start to claw back in this thing? Right, we just got to take it slow and easy, and we got to come after them. And I, I'll tell you something: we just got to go play. We got to make the plays, and uh, we still win this ball game. So it's going to be hard. It's going to take a lot, lot of effort, but I think our guys can do it. One of the things we were talking about in the booth was the fact that your wide receivers have had trouble getting open. How do they do that? Yeah, they, they've done a great job with their coverage. We're just going to have to go game plan them a little bit and go get after them. We're gonna, we've got to be more successful on offense. We've had good drives. We just hadn't rung the bell. Okay, Coach, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Spike Dykes just a couple of moments ago as they open up their second half. That's Peel Scoble with the reception. Ron, the other thing they have to do is they've got to slow down the pass rush of Texas. Defensive front, Brackens, Rink, Stoney Clark. And the way you do that is by the screens and the draw. So I would expect that in the second half here early, Byron Hansbard would get a screen pass to try to slow down this Texas defensive front. See Tony Bracken's statistics. Mitchell in motion. It's Hobbs. Ball is loose. Picked up by Texas. Crenshaw. It pours and it's pouring here on Texas Tech. Rod Hobbs with a pretty good game. Dropped the football. And Robert Crenshaw alert in the secondary, picked it up and was able to turn it into points. Sometimes the magic works, sometimes it doesn't. Dawson tries to make it 35 to nothing. Crenshaw, who returned the fumble for the touchdown. We'll be right back. Dawson prepares to kick it off as the Red Raiders have fallen behind in this one, 35 to nothing. And we're in the first minute of the play of the second half. has had a excellent football game as you look at his stats four tackles three for loss and four hurries of Zebby Lethridge here on his last play he is the player Rod Hobbs are trying to run the draw to slow down the pass rush number 98 Tony Brackens pulls the ball out of the hands of Rod Hobbs 
You're going to see him being blocked there. He pulls the ball out. Robert Crenshaw alertly in the secondary picks it up. Excellent play by Tony Brackens. Takes it to hand fired. Leffers deep over the middle. Has it complete. That's Mitchell. Gets by one tackler and Crenshaw finally gets to him. And let's check in real quickly with Mike Adamley. Mike, what do you have? You know, talking about Tony Braxton. Excuse me a second, Ron. Talking about Tony and what a game he's had tonight. You and I had the chance to interview him yesterday. And this guy has missed some games this season because of that broken bone in his lower leg in the tibia. He was literally chomping at the bits yesterday. If he could have played yesterday, he would have. He almost crawled out of his sweatsuit. And he is part of the reason, as you well know, living here in Austin, Ron, this is a defensive team that has been highly criticized, but they're playing great tonight. Much more You're right. Hansbard hit by Reed just short of the 30-yard line. It's a good tackle by Robert Reed. Outside linebacker actually gained weight so that he could play this position. Very active outside backer for the Longhorns. Mike Gutford, I just want to forewarn you, after hearing Adam Lee's voice just a moment ago and you've been listening to this squeaky thing all night, you might better be prepared for your first play-by-play. -play. I'm a very healthy person, uh, but I, I'm, you're going to make it through. I thought you were going to say I was going to catch a cold. That, too. Tipped and almost intercepted. Brackens with the pressure. The best defense you can have against a passing game is when you meet at the quarterback. The two defensive ends, Tony Brackens from one side, Gene Rink Cleve from the other side, are just going to meet at Sevy Lethridge. Wow. Tony Brackens, they have not been able to control him today. Chris Carter almost coming away with the theft. Tech needs this third down to get back in this ball game. You see they get a double team on Brackens and pressure from the other side as Mitchell makes the reception. Hans Bard is tackled by Kyle Richardson. More pressure on Zebby Lethridge. Robert Reed that time number 40. Receivers well covered downfield by Texas defensive backs. Gary Darnell with a pretty good defensive package on Zebby Lethridge and I think got to go for this. Down 35 nothing. Threes are not going to help. Mike Dykes just looking for some spark to get his offense going. Flag has been thrown by the umpire, and he just throws that one away. Robert Reed just would not leave him alone. Ron, when you're six foot tall and they collapse the pocket like Texas is doing tonight, there's no way to throw the football. There's no windows for Zebby Lethridge to throw the football. Never gets the chance because the pocket collapses on him. Brackens again, number 98, working inside. There's no place for him to throw. Robert Reed pressuring him on the outside. Smartly throws the ball away. So it's first and ten for Texas. As Tech goes for it, and as Mike said, simply having to beat down 35 to nothing. Well, there wasn't even any receivers to throw to. I mean, you pour it down, you put it up for grabs to try to get the first down. There wasn't even anybody out there. I'll see you next weekend. Well, Brackens may have missed almost four football games this year, but he's really made up some ground here tonight. John Mitchell reverses his field, has the corner, out of bounds, just shy of the 50. You guys got to get your voice well for next Saturday because there'll be a lot of passes in that ball game, Florida and South Carolina. Uh, do you think so? <laughs> well, you've got a week where you've got to get healthy. Let me 
these statisticians better rest up their arms, too. That's right. Short drop and the look in is Mitchell. He gets blasted by Robert Johnson. Good strategy again by Texas. Shifting the back out of the backfield. Sean Mitchell, number three, making him a wide receiver, which really stretches the eight-man front defense. And just running a simple hitch with him, number three, James Brown with the completion. Makes it second and four. John Makovic's mother's watching tonight. Greensboro. Barberton, Ohio. John was a quarterback there. The best, probably the best quarterback, in fairness to Barberton, Ohio, probably was George Izzo, who went on to play at Notre Dame. But John was a pretty good quarterback. So we got a timeout. We'll take it with him. 35 to nothing, Texas. 35 to nothing with 11-23 left in the third quarter. The big ball game tonight for John Makovic and uh, this Texas program because when you look at their remaining schedule at Houston, then they get TCU and Baylor at home. Somehow, I think that game on 12-2 will decide this whole thing in the last year of the Southwest Conference. You said tonight, R.C. Slocum's actually pulling for the long runs, right? That would make the numbers right for him. At least then, the Aggies could control their own destiny since they were upset by Texas Tech 14-7 earlier. John Mitchell's ran this hitch out here a couple times. They're going to run this ball. Up. Ricky Williams gets by one tackler and will take it just shy of the 35-yard line. McGuire pushed him out. Well, what I was going to set up, Ron, here is because they've hit the hit out here a couple times by shifting Sean Mitchell outside, wouldn't be surprised here before long. Hitch and go on Verone McKinley with Sean Mitchell because probably figuring he's a running back, he doesn't have a lot of patterns out there. But they may set up the hitch and go. It was Corey Chandler who was down on one knee, and he is shaken up as the training staff has uh, come in from across the way for Texas Tech. Ron, Thursday night's ball game, uh, Florida State is beaten by Virginia, which was a heck of a ball game on, on ESPN. I still think Florida State's got a chance, though. I don't think they're out in the national championship. And uh, I didn't get a chance to hear uh, our group back in the studio today. But uh, if they still beat Florida, they're still back in the thick of this thing. And they still got a chance. Congratulations to, uh, to George Welch and, and his crew, though. What, uh, what a ball game. They did something nobody else has been able to do in the ACC. I was really impressed with Mike Groh, the quarterback for Virginia. I thought he fought the whole ball game and made some, uh, some big plays in that ball game. You look at Spike Dykes looking for some big plays out of his defense. Mitchell will not make it back to the line of scrimmage. Let's check once again with Mike Tirico. All right, Ron. This Jake the Snake is putting some points on the board out there. With the parody in college football, nothing is really surprising anymore, is it? It's the first year I've actually really watched this parody become a factor. away and almost intercepted after McGarity couldn't hold on. Zach Thomas was closer to it. That's why, Ron, you see in the top 10 and top 20, of course, congratulations again to Northwestern. Uh, Gary Barnett winning again, but I think you have a shot at any school in Division I right now taking a program into the top 20. Probably be Mike Adams' time here. Texas six of nine, a third down conversion. <laughs> Brown got it away. Adams trying to say he was held on the play. That was McKinley who got a hand on it. Pressure by Monte Rager, number 34, two freshman. crowd likes this because Dawson is going to come on and try a long field goal. Of course, he is fresh in their minds and will be even at the end of the year. He kicked that 50-yarder into the win to knock off Virginia here. 
just a couple of weeks ago. And in pregame, Ron, he hit a 57-yarder, so he's got the leg. He's got plenty of leg. And he has the accuracy as well. 52 yards, Phil Dawson. And let's check with Mike Adamley. Well, Ron and Mike lost in this avalanche of Texas points is the fact that there's a pretty good family feud going on here. You see there's a pair of brothers who are playing on opposite sides of the football. Tight end for Texas Tech, Jared Feebigger, and Ryan Feebigger, the center for Texas. Dad, Ron, Mother Mary, and Ron, how do you divide your allegiances? I don't. I try to keep it pretty equal. I'm really impartial. Tonight, you can see by the clothes that I'm wearing that I'm just trying to be as impartial as possible. But it, right now, I think i got to pull for uh, Tech a little bit to get them back in the ball game. Mary, every story we read about your two sons was that they did, really didn't like each other too much growing up, that there was uh, so much ro sibling rivalry that they were uh, going tooth and nail all the time. Is that true? They were, especially when they were younger. And was a lot of competition in high school. Brian was always in his brother's footsteps, but they're best of friends now and, and support each other greatly. I don't know about tonight. It doesn't look like they're supporting each other. I'm sure Ryan will put his arm around Jared after this whole thing is over. I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's his turn. This is what happened last year. Tech uh, trounced uh, Texas last year, so probably not. Mary, Jared, thanks for joining us. you got two great sons. Okay, my Adam. bigger family feud. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Good story. Mitchell is the deep man for the Red Raiders this time, but the kick is going to go to the corner to DeBuck. Tony Holmes makes the initial contact on special teams. 28-yard return. Debbie Lethridge intercepted tonight for the first time after 212 straight. You see his numbers on the evening. And Mike, it's just, it's like he's frustrated because he can't get something to light that fire for the offense. It's a real mismatch tonight, Ron. They, they can't handle the defensive front of Texas, number one. They're having trouble running the football, and the receivers can't get away. That's a bad combination. That's why it's 38 to nothing. Well, that was Chris Atkins who stepped up into the hole, all 292 pounds of him, out of Paris, Texas. He Hit. came to Texas at 340, right? Yes. He's lost more than you have. He's a load. 4,940, and he bench presses 550 pounds. Say a fire plug. play back into the boundary and Leopard going to take it close to the first now but he stopped at the 35 by Tyson King. You've followed the uh, Southwest Conference probably as close as anybody over the years and uh, there's got to be so many great memories of the Southwest Conference for you as it closes down. No question about that Mike and probably the thing that that will stand in my mind forever. We've now lived down here 25 years, and this conference has so many great memories, the legends, the great players, and sometimes folks get too wrapped up in some of the tragedies of the 80s, but they don't think about all those great other years that this conference enjoyed. Leopard just going to step out of bounds. Couldn't find anybody, but it was Clarence Martin as a late flag comes in. Clarence Martin was pressuring him. Number 90. It's got to be a late hit on Zebby Lethridge, but there was another flag before that. I vote as a referee for the best referee with signals all year. He is most animated. Oh, he's good. Yeah. 
So as the discussion goes on, 38 to nothing, Texas, eight minutes, 37 seconds left to play third quarter. Offsides, defense. And now the other one, post play foul. So that would have happened after the play. Dead ball foul. Five yard offside has stepped off and it add 15 more, so it's 20 yards against the Longhorns. And Texas Tech the first down at the 44. Set up the screen. Walker going to be hit by Reed and stopped for no gain. Well, top seeded beat Sampras. Defeated. Like while I was reading the promo, it looks like what? Procedure Illegal against. procedure against the Raiders. Now, Walker, uh, procedure by the offense, which is declined. Second down. Barry Darnell, the defensive coordinator of Texas, really has had a solid game plan all evening on this Tech offense. Hands barred, not much there. Stoney Clark and Shane Rink there to put the stopper on him. You see Gary Darnell, the defensive coordinator, wearing the contrasting colors so the captains and the play callers on defense can find him on that sea of mass there uh, on the sideline. <laughs> Former head coach of Tennessee Tech, assistant of Kansas State, Notre Dame. Florida also. Florida. Leffert being flushed out of the pocket, and it's intercepted by Westbrook. Ron, you could see the frustration in Zebby Lethbridge. He actually hit, I believe, Brian Westbrook out of bounds on this play. I don't think there's any call unless the flag came down late. But just frustrating, frustrating evening, evening for Zebby Lethbridge. But what makes this play is the pass rush on Zebby Lethbridge. Never had a chance trying to find Matt DeBuck. Just threw it right to Bryant Westbrook, who's played the last two games like the All-American corner, and you're going to see Zebby Lethbridge late on this. Forcing him out to the right side. So let's take a timeout. We'll be right back. Well, Texas leading 38 to nothing with seven and a half minutes to play in this third quarter. As the Longhorns came up with the turnover, Brian Westbrook with the interception. And Spike Dykes still puzzled with how to get his Red Raider club going in the right direction. They have made a gaggle of mistakes in this one tonight. John Mitchell comes out of the pack. He's going to score. Obviously, 
likes what he sees. Mitchell, third touchdown tonight, 105 yards rushing. Ron, he looked just like a strong running back going through the line of scrimmage. He's only 185 pounds, 5'10", but just runs through tackles on this play. Missed tackle by Dwayne Price, number one, and then the speed and acceleration of Sean Mitchell. Pretty impressive getting in the end zone. They're going to be able to put Bevo away early tonight. He's not, he doesn't look much, very excited down the end zone, does he? Uh, he's always ready for Oaks, I would imagine, wouldn't you think? 44 nothing. Hearing the band play a lot tonight. Bevo just standing still. Look at the points off turnover, Mike. Yeah, it's, and a team that did not commit turnovers coming into this football game. They just had eight turnovers in seven games. But tonight, they just have come unraveled. Zach Thomas across the way. You can bet one thing, regardless of the fact they're down 45 to nothing. He won't play any, any easier. He no. never does. He plays hard all the time. He's one of those guys that, you, that gives you leadership on the field and... Never drops off. Bo Adams. And he's down at the 22. Bo Adams, number 10. Spike said he's a little bit bigger than the football. Pretty exciting return guy. 5-7, they got him listed. I'm not sure if he's 5-7. He doesn't look 5-7 to me. It's a high-priced operation up here as they continue to bring hot tea to Ron Franklin. Bill Little, the sports information director, coming up here. It's Hansbard who uh, bounces it to the outside. Kenny Lewis there defensively. Pretty impressive how they're taking care of you tonight. I know you ordered it, so you won't have to do the play-by-play. -play. Just keep drinking. John Makovic still coaching. Second down and five. Hansbard again. Breaks it outside. He'll have the first down. And then Westbrook runs him out of bounds. He's forced out of bounds by number three. Westbrook. You've been up. I'll tell you, every coach has been in this situation, Ron, where just things don't go right. And... Uh, it just becomes a situation where you're playing catch up and you have to you have to blitz a little bit more and you try to do things offensively because the scoreboard just gets you out of the ball game. Now don't think Texas Tech again tonight, they have been dominated. I mean, it's, this has not been uh, a close football game at all from the start. They've been dominated in every area of the game by Texas. Leopard sprints it out. Not even close. Next Saturday night on primetime, two of the top five offenses in the country hook up. Danny Werfel leads Florida into South Carolina to take on Steve Taney Hills Gamecock. Number three, Florida and South Carolina, 8 o'clock next Saturday. See, this game, Florida and South Carolina, is an interesting ball game to Steve Spurrier for a couple of reasons. Number one, of course, they've, they've not played very well against South Carolina the last couple of years, but... It's almost a preview of what they're going to face against Florida State. Same type of offense. So they get a chance to gamble a little bit, do some things uh, defensively, and, and maybe not show some things that they want to save for Florida State. But it'll be a great teaching film for them against Florida State, and vice versa for Florida State. Ah, boy, he continues to work. He's going to have the first down. Kenny Lewis hanging on. Mike, last year, Florida had to come from behind. I mean, they were down, I think, what, early in the ball game, and came down either at the end of the first half or early second half. As you look at Hobbs, 6'1", 240, he's the youngster who fumbled the last time he carried the football, and it turned into a disastrous touchdown for Texas Tech at the very beginning of the third quarter. 
And for the Tech fans, I mean, this, is, this happens sometimes. I think they've had success against Texas the last few years. And this ball game just got away from them early, but this still is a pretty good football team here at Texas Tech. Beat Texas A&M, played Penn State very tight in the opening ball game. So this is a team very capable. Just is not their night tonight. I know that Spike told me earlier today he has lost now 62 pounds in his uh, effort to become healthier. This game tonight may induce a little bit more loss yeah, weight. He can add about seven more. And he's not going to be able to eat after the game either. <laughs> Always one of those things, Mike, where you say, recall the right play. We had things going, and defensively, they made the right play, or we didn't get it done. You know, Ron, it's interesting because I think uh, as the things go around for coaches, and it's always, you always hear what we did wrong. Well, no one ever gives any credit to the other team. And the other team can play well, and Texas is playing well tonight. They're playing with a lot of spirit, a lot of emotion. They had two weeks to prepare for this game. They had an excellent game plan. They got some breaks early. And there, one of their key fans showed up tonight also. Those are your tickets. Yeah, but he's warm. <laughs> Tony Clark. And what can you say? They just have not been able to slow down the pass rush of Texas. Stoney Clark, another 320-pound fire plug there at the middle guard position. 6-1 just beats the block of Kevin Ward, the center. Stoney, the uh, poet laureate of the 40 acres here, writes poetry, uh, says he wants to also write a book one day. Hands by nothing outside, so he'll take it north. And he takes it to the 46-yard line. Kenny Lewis defensively. Zebby Left Lethbridge has been under pressure all night, just not been able, they have not been able because of the situation, the way it developed, the slow down. Clark, Akins, Brackens, Rink, Robert Reed, just pressure all night from that front of the Longhorns. And the loss of Tony Darden plays in this ball game because he, remember, they left him at home, speed receiver for him, injured an ankle, couldn't make the trip. There's your screen pass. Hansbar back into the boundary, and Lewis will knock him out of bounds. That's four tackles that Lewis has had since he's come into the ball game, and he's only been, well, he's, well, he was in early, but we'll check with Mike Adamley, and we'll straighten that other out in just a moment. Well, Ronald Mike, I know that uh, Texas Tech has shot themselves in the foot too many times tonight, but there is a big difference, at least from the field perspective here. I don't know what it looks like from up in the booth. And that is team speed. It's a little bit like being at the Indianapolis 500. You can't really appreciate speed unless you're in the pits and see the cars going by at field level. It's the same thing down here. Texas is a half a step quicker. They've got the bigger burst of acceleration, and it is dramatic down here in the field. I agree with you, Mike. I think speed to speed factors in Texas is favor. Right over the middle has it. Donnie Hart inside the 25-yard line before Carter put a stopper on him. And you add to it the pass rush on Zebby Lethbridge. Even when he completes a pass like he did on the last play, he still gets hit. And that wears it down as a quarterback. Robert Crenshaw, who had the touchdown on the fumble recovery back earlier, limps off the field and is being attended to by the trainers on the near sideline. Looks like his left ankle. Brackens all over. Tony Brackens has had an All-American night here. Working against the Texas Tech offensive line. You see the little move inside. Too quick for Lynn Schuller to pick up. He has just, he has introduced himself to Zebby Lethridge all evening. Six hurries. 
Mike and I have stood up and looked behind us a couple of times tonight. I know there are a number of pro scouts on that upper row back up there. And they're doing a lot of writing every time number 98 does what he's doing tonight. Atkins will get credit for the tackle. Over Kentucky. Ole Miss wins big. You see Bebo behind the score. Bebo's not real excited, Ron, tonight. It's 45 nothing. He's got this one well under control. All those people that are down there around him are glad he's not excited. Third down. Leopard loses the football. Tyson King finally comes away with it. Dusty Renfro, the linebacker, the freshman linebacker, came through to make the hit on Zebby Lethridge. Good pressure again. You see Dusty Renfro never gets picked up. Gets knocked the ball out of... Sebi Lethridge's hands. There's the pressure. There's the blitz. Ball on the ground. Tyson King, number 50, is going to end up with it. Well, Mike mentioned earlier in the third quarter, this has been a much maligned Texas defense, but they're trying to make their own headlines tonight. As you look at Ricky Williams. Two stiff arms, and he's still going. Pushed out of bounds around the 40-yard line. Dane Johnson hit him last. Yeah, I don't think the baseball coaches are going to get a hold of him for a while. He's a pretty good football player. He said the baseball coaches used to come around to his games on hot days, and they'd say, football games, they'd say, I'd sure hate to be wearing those shoulder pads as hot as it is, but I'll tell you, I, if I'm Ricky Williams, I stay in this football game. He's a pretty talented running back. Forty-five to nothing. Texas leading over Texas Tech. With 2.45 to play. This time Williams is hit as he gets to the line of scrimmage by Sean Banks. reminder that every 10, 30, and 50 minutes after the hour, ESPN will update you on all the scores in the world of sports, including the top 25 scores, which you're seeing right now from college football today. You see the Tennessee score over a pretty good Southern Mississippi football team. Now does Tennessee move up the ladder another notch to four? I think you got to move them up the ladder with the improvement that they have continued to show, don't you? Oh, I think there's no doubt about it. Drilled it. McLemore. Two receiver route run. Taking both wide receivers out. Justin McLemore. James Brown probably threw this ball as well as he's thrown a ball tonight. As, and he had as much on this football because he needed to drill it in there. Byron Hansbar just trying to talk to Zebby Lethry, trying to stay in the ball game, even though they're down 45 0. Still want to put some points on the board. Also gain a little for, for your own psyche, right? You never say never. You just you're always looking to improve, always looking to make some good things happen, even though the game may be out of reach. Ricky Williams. It's Hancock who finally wrestled him down at the 16. Dan Neal heading back to the huddle. He's a junior out of Cypress Creek at 6'2", 285. Some of the players think that he's almost like a, a throwback to uh, generations prior. He just, his favorite thing is to lace up those high tops and get in there and just get bloody with uh, with the opposition and see what he can move out of the way. John McAvick said he's one of the best offensive linemen he's ever had in college football, if not the best. Williams 
get plastered in the backfield as he is hit by Alan Wallace. And for a little bit more on Neal, let's go down and check in with uh, Mike once again. Well, guys, it's funny that you mentioned Dan Neal because he is, uh, I think, our unsung hero tonight. We talk about Tony Brackens and company, but watch number 69. He takes on the All-America, Zach Thomas. Then a pancake here at number 74. And then the pass protection against Cody Patton. He's had a great night, and you're right, he's a throwback. Makovic loves him. This should be the last play of this quarter. Had a quick post over the middle. Incomplete. Scarborough is the man that he wanted on the play. So it stops the clock with 10 seconds to play in the third. Brings on Phil Dawson again for another field goal attempt. Dawson, if you joined us late, had a 52-yarder, which is a career-long for him. That was here in the second half. Matt Davis, the wide receiver to hold. Thirty-two yarder on the way, and he's got it. So five seconds left in this third quarter. Well, that north wind. Continues to work up a little better action here on this Saturday night. Unseasonably cool, but these guys aren't feeling it. They are just enjoying it. You're right. Texas Tech's feeling the cold air, but Texas on their sideline. I mean, they're pumped up with everything going right tonight for the Longhorns. Well, for all today's NHL highlights, news, and special features, it's NHL 2 night on ESPN 2, Tuesdays through Saturday at 11.30 Eastern Time. The hockey show for the hockey fans. Tuesday through Saturday, 11.30. Starting now, right? The NBA starting again. Who's your favorite team? Do you follow any team in the NBA? Houston Rockets. Houston Rockets. I'm now a Miami Heat fan. Are you? Yeah, Pat Riley down there now. I'm going to follow them. They picked up the Lonzo morning so uh, Rudy Tomjanovich has done such a marvelous job down at Houston. And he did something last year that I really admired. He knew he couldn't replace the guy, but he had a problem. And he, he sent him packing. And, and they won the championship. And I thought that was a huge move and also a very gutsy move on his part. And it paid dividends. Dave Johnson. Taji Allen on the tackle. And with that, that's the end of the third quarter with our score. Texas 48 and Texas Tech nothing.